But first off, you know, where to begin? And we've had a lot of great guests on this show, and this is probably the one I'm the most excited about. He is a five-time world champion, three of them in a different weight class. He is a, a, a an author. He's a, a uh, an artist. Uh, he's got books called My Pink Gas Mask. I only laugh when, when it hurts. So many ways to hurt you. Sadists and sequins. And his latest, Imagine What I Could Do to You. It is none other than the exotic Adrian Street. Mr. Street, how are you tonight? I'm doing fine, thank you, and I hope everybody who's listening is uh, doing fine, too. Mr. Street, five books and counting for you to tell the story of your career. Boy, that's a lot of writing and a lot of energy, and you're not even done yet. Uh, I'm sure not, because I've had a very long uh, wrestling career, actually. I had my first professional wrestling match in London in 1957 when I was uh, 16 years of age. And um, I had my last professional wrestling match just last year. So that's um, a total of 56 years as a professional. I've had 15,000 wrestling contests. So as you can imagine, I've got an awful lot to write about. And I've had a very eventful life, not only in the ring, but outside the ring too. How many books do you think it's going to take you to tell your whole story? I think it's going to take another two. I'm, I'm working on number six right now at the moment. That's called Violence is Golden. And um, I haven't got a title for uh, number seven yet, but uh, that'll be the way to go. What I'm looking forward to one day, whenever I've sort of finished writing these uh, books, is to put a book together that's... Um, that's uh, mostly photographs because I've got a million. I've got a million and one photographs. A lot of them have never been seen by uh, anybody, but um, well, just just a very few people. Well, you started off with your career. You were a Tarzan kid for a while, and you were actually a nature boy. What a dozen years before Ric Flair became a nature boy. Tell us a little bit about how you got started in the business, what you did, how you got your names, and how, what made you end up uh, sticking with your real name. Well, the thing is, what you just mentioned, what you just mentioned is uh, Don Leo Jonathan was my first, um, was my first uh, idol. Um, nature boy Buddy Rogers came just about the same time. I mean. Uh, I was an enormous fan of uh, of uh, both of those great wrestlers. Um, at the time in uh, in Britain, when I was just a kid, like about I made my mind up, I wanted to be a professional wrestler when I was about 12 years of age. And um, at that particular time, I couldn't have told you the name of one single British professional wrestler, but I knew all of the uh, the top liners in the uh, in the states. Because I used to buy uh, like the boxing and wrestling magazines over over in uh, Britain, and I don't think they had any uh, British wrestling magazines at the time. I certainly had no access to them anyway. But I was a big fan of so many of the uh, of of uh, the eras that we're talking about. And um, when I was lucky enough to um, get my first professional uh, wrestling match after I'd, well, I'd actually run away from home because my dad had me out of school working in the coal mines when I was uh, 15 years of age. And that's, uh, and that's the life he had mapped out for me. He wanted me to be a coal miner. Well, I'd run away from home when I was uh, 16 and um, start working, first of all, for the independents, um, like the small-time promotions. And... Um, I call myself Kid Tarzan Jonathan after Don Leo Jonathan because uh, I was, you know, so uh, inspired by him. But um, a number of years later, uh, in 1961, when I was 20 years of age, uh, I managed to get onto the big time uh, promotions, and they didn't like my name, uh, Kid Tarzan Jonathan. Um, and they, first of all, they named me, uh, they wanted to name me Adrian Stewart. And I mean, Stewart is a Scottish name. I've got nothing against the Scots, but I'm not Scottish. I'm Welsh. <laughs> and I was really quite upset about, uh, them not using my name, Kid Tarson Jonathan, because by that time, um, I, I was into physique, uh, you know, I was sort of very much into bodybuilding and I'd had my photographs on 
all the major all the, all the major British uh, physique magazines, and they call me Kid Towson Jonathan uh, in the magazines. And and um, I mean, at the time, I thought I was kind of famous, you know, which I which I wasn't, but. Uh, um, I had a very high opinion of myself. I've never really changed. But um, anyway, I told them that if I couldn't be Kid Tarzan Jonathan, like I've been for the last four years, then I'd have to use my real name, which is Adrian Street. But um, first of all, um, quite honestly, I only got my break with the Big Time Promotions because they started running 7,500 shows um, in in one year in Britain, and they needed bodies, and that's why I got my break. I mean, at the time, being as arrogant as I as, as I was, and I guess I still am, um, I thought that I'd got my break with a big time because I was such a fantastic wrestler. But quite honestly, it's because they needed the bodies. They were running so many shows. Um, but when I improved and I did become a good wrestler, um, I realized I was a very good wrestler, but I was a very good wrestler in a land of great wrestlers. I mean, as far as wrestling is concerned, they had the best, the best shooters and everything like that in uh, Britain that, um, than anywhere else in the world, in my opinion. You know, um, Adrian, in, I wanted to ask you this question because I just want to make sure I get this out before I forget about it. Uh, you were mentioning, you know, great British wrestlers, and the, I'm sure you've heard the news now that Billy Robinson has passed away. Did you get to work with him a lot, or did you know him personally? Or no, you... no, I was um, when when I first started wrestling for the big time, I was a lightweight, and Billy Robinson um, has always been a heavyweight. But right. the, the the funny thing is that you should mention him. The first time I ever met Billy Robinson was he was a secretary of the, like a like a wrestling alliance it was like um oh i can't think what you call it it's, it's like uh a union yeah that's right it was like a wrestler's it was like a wrestler's union and uh, the first time i ever met billy he said are you he said are you in the union and i said no i did i'd never even heard of it but he said you need to be and uh, he said, I'll sign you up right now. And uh, it cost me like one uh, British pound. And I've still got that little pink uh, pamphlet and everything like that that I had to sign myself. And Billy signed it. And that was in 1961 when I was 20 years of age. I've still got, I've got that in a drawer near the room. I've been offered all kinds of money for it, actually, by collectors. But um, I think I'd like to keep it myself, you know. Absolutely. But that's the first time I ever met him. But like I said, I've never actually wrestled with um, with uh, Billy because uh, Billy Billy came over over to the uh, states, and I never actually came across him in the uh, in in the states. But I knew him very very well in uh, in uh, Britain, and in actual fact, that brings us in a circle right back. I was saying that I was a, um, a very good wrestler in a land of great wrestlers. Well, as you, pro as you as you possibly know, um, Billy came from Manchester, which isn't very far away from Wigan, and Wigan is a dirty, grimy little uh, mining town um, in Lancashire, where uh, Billy Riley had his uh, built his uh, gym that they called Snake Pit, and they had some unreal. You know, when you're talking about that, was a mecca of real wrestling. I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, Carl Gotch. Oh yeah. Well, there's a guy. Okay, there was a guy called Carol Istas. He'd been 15 times. He'd been an Olympic champion in uh, Greco-Roman wrestling, and he was a champion of Belgium. Um, oh, how many times? Uh, something like 15 titles in uh, Belgium and um, and uh, Europe. In uh, not only in uh, Catch Can, but in um, in uh, in Greco-Roman uh, wrestling, he was absolutely untouchable. But not only that, he was what they call a Dockland champion, and a Dockland uh, the Dockland champion then was like street fighting. It was anything: thumb in the eye, kick in the groin, uh, hair pulling, gouging, anything. Um, and he was a, he was the uh, the all time champion in in his area in Belgium of uh, of that style of fighting. When he came over to Britain, 
um, as a professional wrestler. And everybody in Europe at that time had heard of the Snake Pit in Wigan. And that is where Billy, uh, you know, obviously that's where Billy, Billy uh, trained, that's where Billy learned his wrestling, and that's how he became as, such a fantastic wrestler that he was. But anyway, when Carol Istas came over, he, the first thing he wanted to know is, where is the Snake Pit? Where's Billy Riley's gym? He was going to go there and show uh, the Wiganers what wrestling was all about. When Carol Istas went there, there wasn't anybody in the gym that couldn't beat him. When you think of his pedigree, you know, what he was actually capable of and the championships that he'd uh, won and all the rest of it. Anyway, he decided that he was going to throw everything he thought he knew about wrestling out the window and he was going to start again. And he trained for eight years under Billy Riley himself. So you said he was, he, he was with his pedigree, he came in there and couldn't whoop anybody. He couldn't, everybody, everybody in the gym was capable of whooping him. <laughs> anyway, after he'd sort of worked, after he'd worked under uh, Billy Riley and learned the Lancashire style of uh, of submission uh, wrestling, uh, the catch as catch can. He left. He wrestled in Canada and came into the States. And he changed his name when he came over when he crossed the Atlantic from Carol Istas to Carl Gotch. Oh, be darned! So it just shows you how good they were over there. 